Hello everybody, Floyd again. Welcome back to the asylum. Not a whole lot going on in this week's video, but I do have to show you a couple things. The week before last, I was getting ready for the uh, Carolina Classic Motorcycle Show in Concord, North Carolina, hosted by the Vintage Japanese Motorcycle Club of North America. And I'll put a link to that video on their channel below. It was a successful show, a nice little small local show to start with, but I had the feeling that it's going to require an even bigger venue next year. I pulled almost all the chrome off of the Yamaha SR500 to get it ready for vapor blasting and if necessary replating or replacement. And a few weeks ago I had ordered a Tech Savina seat. Their company that sells online they kind of quasi based out of Texas and Vietnam. The manufacturing and the seats are all in Vietnam and that's where my seat shipped from. They make decent looking custom and, and replacement seats for, all, for a huge variety of vintage motorcycles. So I thought that I would give them a try because the pricing was really good. I think the one that I got for the Yamaha SR500, which is a custom seat, not a stock seat, was like around 250 shipped to my door, which is not bad. I went ahead and opened the box and peeked at it. It seems to be a fairly high quality, so I'm going to show it to you. And I'll let you see what the Yamaha looks like right now. Because I pulled all the chrome off of it. That took a while. And that's sitting on a table in here waiting on me to get time to mess with it. So without any further ado, let's open up this door and take a look at this seat. It was securely packaged like it was shipped. Very well packaged. Bubble wrap, lots of styrofoam around it. The box isn't really that important right now. Let's take a look at the seat. It is different from the stock seat. They make seats that look like the stock seat that we use this cowl, but I'm actually not a fan of this cowling. And my bike is a resto mod. It's not going to be completely factory stock when I get done. It's already too late for that. I've already changed out the exhaust system and the carburetor. So I'm going to go ahead and do it my way. Tell you what, let me turn it around this way. So As you can see here, the length and the width match very well. It all looks very good. I'm going to pause the video for a second and bring the camera in close up so we can change out the hardware and give you a better look at the bottom of the seat and at the stitching and the quality of it so you can decide for yourself if you want to buy one. As you can see here, it's a very different low profile look. This seat is a lot lower profile than the original which is one of the things I like. All of the stitching appears to be a very good quality. The lines are fairly even. No real complaints so far as the appearance of quality on it goes to me. As compared to the original seat, it came with a matching passenger grab strap if you want to put that back on, which I probably will just for the sake of giving it a more finished appearance, but I may not. It has the seat rubbers in the right place. The hooks are not perfectly identical, but they're there, and it comes with all new hardware. So let's swap over our hardware and see what it looks like. I 
I'm going to temporarily install these for the mounts for the sake of the review. I'm not going to reuse I'm not going to use the grab strap because I would prefer a cleaner look. I do think that this base here is fiberglass, so uh, you should be careful putting your bolts in it. I accidentally pulled out one that I didn't need to. I needed to pull it out to get the strap off anyway. See this fiberglass of the strip out. So, so make sure you do this very carefully. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go get a T handle to use to tighten these up with instead of using this impact wrench. So you have to be careful getting it back in correctly. Since this is eventually going enough going to be a show bike, I will pull these brackets back off and give them a good a good cleanup. But for the purpose of this video, which is to check out this seat, check out the quality and the fit of it. It's all right. Then let's leave them a little dirty for now. Yeah, I don't mind taking it apart two or three times if it's necessary to get it right. Let me put the original screws back in their places so I don't lose them. Because like I do with so many things, I will put the original seat on the shelf. Unless I actually cut a frame and severely modify a bike where there's no putting it back stock, I tend to keep all the original parts that way. Should I ever want to put it back stock, I can. I didn't keep the original exhaust off of this one though because it was too far gone. So anyhow, let's take the camera off the tripod a minute. Let you take a close up look. Like I say, please excuse the mess in my shop here. I've had a lot going on both with home projects and with motorcycle stuff. Between that, keeping up with my job. But you can see the seat pan looks very well made. Very nice, sturdy piece. The mounts and everything are in the same place. It's got nice rubber mounting on it. The brackets. 
bolted right on the holes were in the right place. We'll see how it looks when I put it on, but so far so good. You know they say integrity is what you do and nobody's looking. Well these stitches underneath the seat will be hidden. But they still look pretty good. As I mentioned, this seat is a lot lower profile than the factory seat. It's probably a good inch and a half lower. Just sitting on the bench here. But then the rear end of it rises up to about the same height. So even though it doesn't reuse the cowling, the bottom of the rear edge is extended down enough to serve the same functions of cover and concealment as the cowling did. Of course, remember earlier I was talking about having all the chrome off of this bike. It's ready to go into the vapor blaster here so I can decide what needs to get redone and what can simply be polished and put back on the bike. So here it is. Most of it looks pretty good. There's quite a bit of rust. Chroming has gotten so expensive that a couple of the parts that may wind up simply being painted. But with the front fender, I'm still trying to decide if I should get it re-chromed or if I should go ahead buy a new one and put on there a new aftermarket one or a really nice used one. Buying it, believe it or not, if it were possible, even if you're an aftermarket fender is definitely cheaper than getting the new getting the original one rechromed. And a new old stock one will be about the same price if you can find one. Let's take a close-up walk-around view of this seat. Maybe they guessed that I was going to do a YouTube review or something. But it sure is a nice one. It looks really well made. How comfortable is it? Well, that I don't know. Comfort's not really secondary. I can't ride the bike right now because I have it taken half apart. But when I put the seat on it, I'll give it a sit test anyway for a minute. So let's get set up now and go set this thing on the bike and see how it fits and how it looks. Okay, here we go. We're ready to install the seat. Got to take these two bolts out. These are retain the seat. Right here. Then these two hooks right here hook under these two posts here and the seat sets down on the bike like so it's a little bit easier right this minute with all the fenders and everything off let's see if we can May need to spread out the mounts a little bit. Not a problem. We can do that. Let me go back to the table just a second. There's a little bit of play in these mounting brackets where they attach. that one over some to the outside because they appear to be too close together from what I can feel
Now let's swing back around to the bike. So far everything's good. A little minor adjustments like that are always to be expected when you're doing dealing with custom components. Well, it turns out that actually fitting the seat is a little bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to temporarily loosen these mounting brackets. Not sloppy loose, but enough that they can be moved. And I will put the seat into place here. I take the screwdriver and come in through the holes here. Okay. That one appears to be lined up okay. Go to the other side. Try putting your bolts in the mount. Now we will snug them down. Oops. Something just popped there. That doesn't sound good. Well, the problem was not the seat didn't break. The original seat mount broke. That's a bummer. Oh well, for right now we'll go ahead and put the seat on and sit on it. That speaks volumes for the strength of the fiberglass seat fan. I would probably recommend if you're doing this, I think I would recommend making about a two to four millimeter shim out of rubber. I'll probably print one on the 3D printer to go underneath the seat mount. That would probably help prevent your old raggedy dry rotted seat mounts from snapping when you tighten them down. So this seat fits a lot closer to the frame than the original did. Like I said, we can't ride it. I got it all tore apart. I got these old scrambler handlebars stuck on it just in case I need to push it around the shop. The seat is extremely firm, but that's okay. The factory seat was miserable. The foam in it was shot. When it's a thinner seat, it needs to be a lot firmer. There's no way to really tell without getting it out on the road and putting a couple hundred miles on it which I can't do yet. So, is it quite perfect? Well, I'm not sure. Like I said, with a little bit of, it's a little fiddly. 
to get it mounted up correctly. But it fits really well. Let me pull the phone out of the mount here. After I did a little measuring, I wound up making some 12 millimeter thick spacers to go under the seat mounts on this seat. That way it will fully install without stretching the seat mount out at all and we'll still have plenty of cushion. I printed these with the Overture TPU95 rope urethane. They're still semi-flexible but they're pretty stiff and TPU filament is an incredibly tough material. It's almost a wonder material for 3D printing compared to everything else. Even, even compared to a lot of the carbon fiber stuff, you just can't do as much with it as you can with TPU. You can make gaskets and everything out of this stuff. But anyhow, that's what I did. 12 millimeters between the seat and the factory seat mount. And after this, there's only a tiny bit of difference in the way the seat sits down over the frame with the spacers installed. I think it works out great. With the seat, and I feel like I got my money's worth. Like I said, it's a little fiddly to install just because those mounting brackets have play in them. The factory mounting brackets have play in them and you have to adjust them side to side a little bit. And I would really recommend making a shim and putting under the factory mounting brackets between those and the fiberglass seat pan. Or between the mounting brackets and the frame, for that matter, of one of the other places. But if you do that, if you put it between the mounting brackets and the frame, you'll have to put longer bolts in, which could be a problem. So that's kind of it for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I got a few other things to do this week coming up. I finally got fork seals and tires for the cheap ass interceptor. So I'm going to be putting those on. I'll let you know how that goes because I'm going to make a couple of other changes to it while I'm at it. So until then, <coughs> this is Floyd. Keep riding, keep wrenching, and stay crazy.